Today, we are going to talk about how do you use Gallup assessment in team coaching. But before that, let me introduce myself and my partner today in the conversation. I am Jaya Bhateja and I'm a master certified coach. I run a, co a coaching school called Abhyudhya Coaching Co Global Coach Circle. And we also conduct systemic team coaching uh, certification for coaches who want to offer team coaching as a service. Selesh is one of our certified coach and um, we all trying to uh, create more and more difference in teams across the organizations and the world. So um, I would invite Selish to introduce himself. And today Selish, Selish is also a certified Gallup's uh, strengths coach. And he would be sharing with us as to how can we use Gallup for team coaching purposes. So over to you, Selish. Thank you, Jaya. Uh, happy to be here. So <clears throat> I'm a Gallup certified strengths coach. I've got my TCC as well. And uh, I'm trying to create a niche for myself to become a team coach. And uh, I'm happy to say I've got uh, trained under Jaya uh, to, for my initial systemic team coach, coaching certification. Uh, so that's about myself. I, I have moved, uh, I've become a coach uh, having moved from IT and banking background. And I'm uh, extremely happy with my journey uh, so far. Thank you. Awesome. Great. So, Selesh, we'll keep this conversation conversational. And um, as you share about uh, Gallup Strengths Assessment and how we use it, I'm going to keep asking you questions about it. Sure. Yeah. All right. Thank great. You. Over Thank to you. you. Yeah. yeah. So, can you see my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So, this is uh, uh, from a real um, situation of a client engagement. Obviously, we have uh, removed all the information. So, this is uh, you know, all the data you see is can be very generic, nothing referring to the client. So this was a team coaching uh, session. And as I'm just going to go through the slides and then we will engage in a conversation instead of, you know, just one person presenting it. Uh, so, Selesh, before we start, uh, would you like to share a little about what's Gallup? What does it do for absolutely. people who don't know anything about Gallup? Yeah. So, you know, Gallup has been around for a long time. It's a company in the US, they do a lot of polls, uh, you know, for every single thing there is a Gallup poll. Uh, recently, I received an interesting email uh, talking about world cooking index, you know, how many people in which country are cooking more, less, eating out, etc. You know, they, they run polls and say that, you know, strange things, they may say, people in Delhi like lace over Doritos, you know, <laughs> they do, they're extremely rich in data collection. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, this gentleman called Don Clifton, uh, along with Martin Siegelman, these two folks are considered as fathers of uh, modern positive psychology. So they took a bunch of psychologists and economists and created this assessment. Uh, it used to be called Strength Finder. Uh, it went through multiple versions. And uh, as of date, about six months ago, uh, 25 millionth customer has taken this assessment. Uh, it's a uh, psychometric assessment like the others in the market. It basically talks about, it, it gives us a map about how we think, feel, and behave in situations. So that's about Gallup and Strength Finder. So. Thank you, Salish. Yeah, thanks, yeah. So what I'm showing here is, uh, uh, I mean, I can say this is my own, I can share my report. This is my uh, strengths report. Uh, so when I do the, when you do the assessment, you will get your 34 strengths, and these 34 I, are split into four domains. Uh, very briefly, uh, the first one is executing. It's all about how people get the job done. You know, they are about you know people who actually are in the weeds, operations, doing the work. You know, all of that. And uh, this is the this this beautiful purple color you see, uh, and then there are seven or eight uh, strengths within this domain called achiever, discipline, arranger, et cetera. We'll not go into the details at this time. And the second one is the orange theme, which is the influencing theme, where it talks about how we can maximize some delivery, how we can communicate effectively, how we can have difficult conversations with people, how we are energized to meet new people, uh, you know, to get it going and how we are competitive and things like that, how we are influencing. And then obviously the blue theme, which is getting more and more important, all about emotional quotient and building relationships, harmony, including everybody, connectedness, developer, empathy, which is really important, harmony, et cetera. 
And then the green theme is all about strategic thinking, being objective, data-oriented, futuristic, coming up with new ideas, being a learner and an intellectual. So these are the high level themes. And then when someone takes the assessment, they will get a report like this. So uh, my question is, Alish, uh, I have seen uh, Gallup reports uh, and I've done the free assessment. The main report comes with this chart or this is something you've created? So, no, no, this is part of the report. It's part of the report, okay. Yeah. Cool. So there is a, uh, uh, there is, the assessment is the same, but if you pay a smaller fee, you get only your top five. Uh, so we can do coaching on top five. Obviously, you know, we can coach more people for a lower cost. Uh, this is the full test for, a, uh, it's around 50 US dollars, where you get the entire 34. It's a 23, 25 page uh, PDF with extremely detailed analysis of your top five and a little bit more on the top 10. Sure, thank you. And uh, obviously what you see highlighted are the top 10 uh, in this case for me. And uh, what we do is Gallup says, be more of who you are, who you already are. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and another thing I wanna say is the way we look at this is, for example, I, uh, you know, after I finished my 12th grade, I did uh, uh, science subjects. I became an engineer, did computer science, got into IT. So at this point, let's say I'm still working in IT. Uh, I am who I am because of two things. One is my technical domain, education, knowledge I have gained over working in various companies, uh, doing either product development or IT infrastructure or various components of my job. So that gives me an ability to be who I am. In your case, Jaya, uh, taking you as an example, maybe after 12th grade, maybe you did, uh, you know, HR or, I mean, uh, you know, got into, you know, uh, coaching and all of that. So you have that as your domain knowledge, you know, and if you take this assessment and if I take this assessment, this is not testing our functional domain technical knowledge. It is telling us how we naturally are inclined to think, feel, and behave in any situation. And according to Gallup, a person is successful by combining their domain technical knowledge and how we naturally think, feel, and behave. Sure. So this test is concentrated on that. So I'm just getting curious about these numbers. When you say one learner, does it mean that's your top one or does it say something else? That is my top strength. That is your top strength. And uh, 10 with achiever is your 10th strength, right? Absolutely. And yes. how does how do they vary between one and 10? Like, does it mean you're more of a learner and less of achiever? Is that how it is? Yes, that is true. So obviously learner is my top strength and then uh, followed by responsibility, followed by relator, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, achiever is number 10. So I, I love to finish my tasks every day, but sometimes I'm not there all the time. So when we have this report, one through 34, what um, as, as part of the coaching, what we do is we say, we ask the uh, coachee to identify what are the, among the top 10, what are the strengths that always represent you? Mm. We call them your top strengths. Yes. And after that, as you go down the list, it becomes mostly you. And then as you go down, it becomes sometimes. We call them the middle of the pack or supporting strengths. So basically, let's say, let me pick up something. So around anything which is in 30s is sometimes, right? Uh, no. So uh, just to complete my thought, as you keep going down further down at the bottom of your stack, there may be something that is never you. We call them lesser talents. In my case, uh, somewhere around maximizer, around 28, hmm. is when I draw my line, 29 to 34, it's usually never me. Okay, and is that a pattern for all, that 25 uh, is... Uh, no, it, it's different for different people. So we give them a technique as to how to identify the lesser talents versus your supporting talents and your top talents versus your middle of the pack. So, uh, all right. So I'm assuming that if there is a strength, which is uh, on the lower uh, level of the stack and you uh, you think it's required for you to now develop because of your current situation, then you yes. intentionally work on that, right? Yes. Okay. yes. So as I said before, we concentrate more on the individual's top 10. If you take my own example, in my case, command is number 33. Yeah. And competition is 34. So competition is a talent very briefly where 
every time I do something, I want to win over a colleague or someone or a situation. So I, my competitive spirit is very low. So I ask a question, because I'm not super competitive, is it impacting my job? Did I get negative feedback from colleagues in the past and stakeholders? And when I need to use this, am I getting drained out? In my case, the answer for all those three is a no. So for me, although competition is number 34, I will not worry about it. However, if you look at command, command is a talent where a person with high command is motivated to have a difficult conversation with a colleague or somebody with the sole interest to fix a problem. Mm. Personally, I do not like it. And about 12 years ago, when I was working for a large French bank, one of my managers came and gave me very honest feedback that really helped me. He said, you're a good boss, you're a nice boss, but you are not giving the right feedback to certain people who are not doing their job. That is because I struggle with it and I don't like to tell people they're not doing a good job, even though that is the message that needs to be given. And I took that to heart and I tried to improve. Even today, when I give difficult feedback, I struggle. But the fact that I know that it is a problem for me helps me prepare better, have more data to support my case. And I will also try to use some of my blue strings that you see on the screen to make me go through that conversation. Mm -hmm. So I want to manage my weakness, which is command, so that it doesn't become a hindrance in my uh, way I work in a company or in a family situation, or it should not become a problem for me. So that is, so we let people identify a few weaknesses at the bottom of their stack and give them some tips. There is no magic wand to make that strength, you know, the lower strength better, but you know, that's, we give them tips. Sure, sir. That's interesting. So, yeah, so this is a very interesting thing. Uh, I also want to uh, you know, there's, there's something around the branding, uh, we'll, we'll come to that. <clears throat> if you look at my report, uh, learner, responsibility, developer, developer is somebody who loves to help people. And, you know, that is per one of the nouns used for developer is coach. And I will uh, skip to this slide. Uh, just to, you know, <clears throat> these are words, these are all from Gallup. These are the words I like and I picked to describe various talent. So achiever is somebody who's driven, intense, ambitious. There are three adjectives and a noun for that talent. So it's a cheat sheet. So I used in my own case, a combination of learner, connectedness, developer, responsibility, and belief to pick this career, what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I transitioned from IT to become a coach. So if you look at those combinations, I want to learn about my customers. I want to take accountability for their growth, which is developer. And because I believe that helping others is important. So that is how I came up with my own brand statement and made a career change. So you know, it's kind of eating your own dog food there. So. Yeah, thank you. And one more thing is, uh, you know, a, a question that pops into my mind is if somebody else has uh, the similar thing like learner, developer, belief, should they become a coach? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, However, I will also say that, let's say there is a, um, a lady who's very, very technical in IT, who's an architect, and she's working on new things every day for the, you know, for the, for the company. And let's say her report is exactly like mine. She may not want to be a coach like me. However, she would definitely enjoy sharing her knowledge in that area of her expertise to people within the company so mm. that, you know, they become better at it. She takes and she will take enjoyment in learning and helping others in her area. So mm. that's another thing I just wanted to point out. Very interesting. Yeah, I think the interpretation makes it more interesting. And how do you really develop? I have uh, also been uh, asked a lot of times from the client saying, hey, don't you think this put people into boxes? What do you have to say about that? And uh, actually, yeah. the purpose of coaching is for people to break those boxes and think beyond and think of impossible. So how do you respond to something like that? Absolutely. Great, great question. The thing is that everything we see here is neutral. And if I take this assessment three, four years from now, Gallup says, don't waste your money, but they're happy to take your money. One may become three, 32 may become 30, minor changes. 
The thing is that we are trying to create a common language of strengths. And the thing is, just because they did a test does not necessarily mean that they are boxed. One of the, there's a very interesting activity uh, we run. We call it Love Crazy Envy. So <clears throat> once their coaches are familiar with this, uh, I ask them, pick the ones you love among your top 10. They may pick number six. They may pick number seven, which is absolutely fine. And what are the things you envy? Usually they pick from the middle of the stack. You know, how can you, be, I love this theme, but it's in the middle of my pack. How can I improve? We still give work with them on the tips. And also when we create a branding for them, uh, when we write a brand statement, uh, you know, I suggest to them, pick your favorite out of your top 10. Mm-hmm. And we can create multiple brand statements with multiple things, but yes. it is their choice. Just because, uh, you know, we, the goal is not to slot them, but, to make them realize who they are. Okay. So can you give me an example of a brand statement here? Sure. So in this case, uh, my own example again. Um, So I have this beautiful book from Gallup. uh, A very senior coach has written uh, this book where he combines two talents and gives a statement. Yeah. So I took my one and two, learner and responsibility. According to this Gallup uh, gentleman, the combination of learner and responsibility says, I am at my best as a student when I help others, uh, when when I, uh, you know, teach others new information. I'm at my best when I commit to teach others new information. Commitment is all about responsibility. Being a student and teaching comes from my learner. So what I did was I looked at that and I actually wanted to create a brand statement and put put it on my LinkedIn. So I said, what else can I add to this? And obviously developer and belief just came out to me in my own case. So what I did was I, I, I stole this statement and I tweaked it. I said, I'm at my best. I removed the student and I said, when I help others grow with new insights and information. So that is learner, responsibility, developer and believe. I believe in helping others. Mm-hmm. Helping others grow is developer. Responsibility is commitment mm-hmm. and learner is new information and concepts. So in my own case, that was the branding I came up with. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. So moving on again, this is uh, <clears throat> you know the various 34 themes uh, like a cheat sheet of you know who someone is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I share this and a lot of documentation with the people coach. And then uh, obviously we are here to discuss team coaching. And I, I picked a couple of my favorite quotes, uh, you know, from Lencioni and uh, Margaret Mead, um, where, you know, you have taught us that, you know, team is where the magic happens. You know, individuals are great, yeah. but, you know, team is where things get done. Okay. And, uh, you know, so when I use uh, the Gallup Clifton Strength Finder, uh, we do the assessment for everybody. Mm. And we have a team grid. Okay. And I will uh, share that with you. And there are a few other tools that I have learned uh, uh, with you and others. Uh, Lencioni's for his behavior, systemic thinking, wellness. We kind of integrate into this model. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is what I want to share with you at this time. Okay, so Selish, my question is... Um... Okay, I just had a question. Yeah. I'm forgetting. I'll come back to that. Sure, sure. So this is a team uh, where there were 12 individuals. So uh, we gave them the keys. So they did the assessment, and they have each of them have their 34 report. And before we start talking about the team, <clears throat> it's important that each of them understand the report for themselves and understand who they are. So instead of spending three, in a normal situation, we spent four, three, four hours with an individual to do coaching on the report. In this case, we did just 45 minutes, half an hour for each person because of the time issues. And at least they knew who they were. And then uh, I have access to this Gallup website where I can pull all of them together and create a team, which is, this is the report from that. And obviously there are no names uh, because of uh, privacy. So these are the 12 people and the top line is the report for the team. So this is a grid we look, we keep. And interestingly, sometimes it is so easy when I show a team a grid, 
you know, for the next one hour, I have to do very less. I just sit back and ask, just ask questions. And they're like, wow, okay. Now I know why not to slot people, at least they will understand the trend of how their colleague had behaved in the past or how they work together or where may, they may have had some issues just by looking at this report because everybody has a common language and understanding of their own and the team grid. So uh, these are top, or these, these are all 36? All, all 34. All 34. So okay. yeah, for example, the one, the one to five are in this green color, seven to 10 are the light gray and, and so on. Oh, all right. And the absolute, uh, the dark blackish thing are the, maybe the 30 to 34. Got it, got it. That's interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah, then get get you to see the collective picture of the team as to, okay, hey, how are we distributed in terms of our strengths and who can I leverage for what and why am I not able to get along that with that person and why I get along with someone, um, you know, and why our conversations match or do not match. So it's actually a great way to just put everything together. Yeah. And another thing is uh, obviously uh, looking at a team coaching you know, we, we, we will ask them, okay, why are you engaging us as a coach? What is the purpose of this intervention? And then they will say, okay, we are doing well in doing this, but we are struggling with uh, people agenda in this team. We are struggling with uh, trying to influence our customers. And some of those questions they ask us as part of the initial thing we do with the customer. And then we put this up. My job becomes easy because they, they kind of sense, you know what? Yeah our communication is 24, you know, we are not able to, you know, even sometimes within the team or to their partners. And uh, Activator, for example, they were struggling with uh, 32. Uh, mm -hmm. And another thing they were really uh, wanted to work on was empathy, mm -hmm. you know, 29. So they said, we want to create a culture where everyone is respected, everybody's opinion is heard, not only that, but we actually care for our folks. And unfortunately, in this case, they are extremely busy. A lot of times, you know, uh, people mean well, but they may not show empathy. Sometimes there's just no time in the, in, in the day. So. so so that makes uh, another question uh, come up in my mind is, is it, does it vary based on your context and situation or it's your, because, it, because I understand these are like natural strengths. Yes. So will empathy change if all of these people have a relaxed schedule? Um, probably not. Probably not. Uh, for example, if you look at <clears throat> these folks, they love to deliver because achiever is number two. And they are very objective, data-driven. Okay? Generally speaking, see, people can be analytical and have empathy high. I have seen, but generally speaking, people who make decisions with data generally think are very objective, very scientific. And empathy is all about emotions and listening to other person through mm. their eyes with your heart and your emotions. So generally, they tend to be a little bit on the opposite ends of the spectrum. In this case, uh, it may not change even though they have, you know, they may not have, uh, they have more relaxed schedule. But one of the things in this case uh, we came up with is uh, I introduced them to a listening model uh, by Dr. Otto Schrammer, uh, Theory U, MIT lab. And just explain to them how to listen, you know, through how to see an issue from the eyes of another person, you have to stop thinking for a moment. You know, these people think a lot. Uh, so stop thinking and just be a mirror. Look at the situation because even though we are listening to someone, but if we are thinking and if someone is sharing a situation with us, we may be thinking, why is this person? We may be judging, we may be coming up with a solution. Yeah? Another problem is these people love to help. The intent to help is there. They are kind, they're compassionate, but they try to give a solution in the next minute. So empathy is gone. Empathy is all about waiting, listening, being patient. And that is where they struggle. And when I showed them that, they said, you know what? Empathy is 29, but we mean well, we, we help each other. It's just that we don't listen <laughs> was some of the things they found. Our strengths are our weakness. It establishes that, right? When we are very good at something, that's where we start making mistakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So this is the grid. Uh, and uh, 
<clears throat> little bit more detail. <clears throat> this is the view from the four domains point of view. Uh, I think uh, you know, slide five is very cluttered. You know, it's hard to make out. Uh, so this is where they are. Uh, so you know, um, they are. They love to learn. They are very objective. They are future oriented. Um, and they're also strategic. They, they not only have a good vision of the future, they come up with two or three ways to get to the future, which is strategic. So, and also they were extremely happy uh, with number three because uh, for uh, they are an analytics team within the within mm -hmm. the company. So that they were really happy that it was three. If it was lower, maybe they would have been not very happy because that's the core job they do. Yeah. Uh, and then they they know how to deliver. They take accountability to, you know, to deliver on their goals, which is uh, responsibility, and they deliver. That is achiever. Restorative is all about fixing bugs and debugging problems, and that's part of their job. And they have focus and arranger. So uh, as a team, they are really strong in uh, the green and the violet, um, strat thinking and executing. And they struggle a lot with influencing. They're okay in relationship building, uh, they, you know, they have close friends within the team, which is related. They help each other grow, uh, developer, and also they customize things based on individuals, such individualization, etc. But as a as a team, have to be better at empathy. That's one thing that came out as a weakness. And they also said we want to be better at self assurance, which is in the influencing side. They want to be more confident, not wait for others to help them. And communication was another thing uh, they came up with. So they've identified a bunch of weaknesses, but the, the, the more important ones we looked at was uh, communication, self-assurance, and empathy for a team as a whole. Yeah, I think what I'm appreciating uh, about Gallup is the, the easiness of the language. It's very straightforward. You don't have to interpret too much. While I'm sure there are definitions available, but to understand what is a maximizer or what is, let's say, an activator is not very difficult if you are in a, you know, development field or learning and development. So that's something that I'm kind of acknowledging at this moment. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, I've coached a lot of IT folks in this, and you know how IT folks are very analytical strategy. They they will question everything you give in a report, and when they see these 34 dimensions in these four domains, they are almost like, wow, okay. I, I know this about myself, but now I can say I'm this, I'm that. Right. Uh, another thing I want to also point out, Jaya, is that um, when we wake up uh, today morning and I want to do some activity using my technical functional domain knowledge, I'm also using my strengths. And the interesting part is it comes so naturally to us. So today, when I'm successful at a task, I may have used my one, three, six, and seven as part of my top 10. Tomorrow, it may be nine, eight, three, five, and one. So this beautiful combinations comes naturally that we don't even need to think about it. And one of the exercise I do with the coaches is I make them write a sentence about themselves using three or more of their top talents. Mm. And they go on this self-awareness journey and they create these beautiful statements, understanding them. And I also tell them, use whatever combination you want. It's your choice. Like like a branding statement, you mean? Absolutely. Okay. So we write that, but for branding, see, uh, uh, we we also I also try to incorporate elements of what they do and the impact of their job in the brand statement. Mm -hmm. Because if I meet my, uh, uh, you know, if a, if one of the person meets their big boss, the MD in an elevator, you cannot say, "Here's who I am from my strengths. Here's who I am in my job." It's one statement, you know, twelve to fifteen words where they have two, three of their strengths, their job, and the impact of the job. So those are the elements I use in creating branding. I kind of did it on my own, and I'm trying to help others. Uh, with that. Nice. That's nice. All right. So, and continuing on. Uh, so, so here is where uh, this team leads with strat, uh, you know, strategic thinking followed by executing. And uh, although there are more things in the top 10, five here and only three, Gallup has different weightage. Number one has more weight. Number three has more weight than six, seven, et cetera. But they're equally good in both. So I kind of said, loves to learn. That's learner at one. Objective, logic-based decision-making, analytical at three, positive about the vision of the future. And then they can write a statement about their strat thinking in one, one sentence. 
and you know they are hard working diligent uh, take ownership they know how to fix problems single minded focus and can orchestrate the best resources and these are the top 5 and this is a sentence i worked with the team that they came up with that kind of is like a brand for the team mm. so we have individual branding and team branding yeah so passion is from relator commitment is from responsibility and learner instead of learning themselves i we kind of tweaked it and said let's learn about our stakeholders issues so learn about business requirement that is learner and diligently deliver Del- the delivery delig- diligence is all coming from achiever data driven is from analytical and it it helped me because this was an analytics team so data driven analytic analytic solutions i think there's a apostrophe missing <laughs> but this and we kind of worked with them and they said okay let's pick this pick that and then this kind of uh, became a brand for them that that I shared with them so interesting and how do they remember this brand then chalish well <clears throat> see they have to obviously maybe post it somewhere understand it mm-hmm. you know it kind of reminds them see when we do team coaching using gallup strengths grid we tell them to put the team grid top 5 and their own uh individual one at the bottom mm. so as a team they know and individually they know and they know individually how each person is contributing to the team top 5 top 10 weaknesses strengths etc so, so basically we're trying to raise their self awareness and language to really communicate through that But, yes so and then we can work on what next okay work on um, if you go to the next uh yeah they identified these as some of their weaknesses they want to work on mm. and my advice was i'm happy you have so many weaknesses don't boil the ocean and try to fix everything the whole point of strength finder is to work on the top yeah. so just pick one or two and i initially started with maybe communication and empathy mm. yeah, and then the rest we can look at at a later time uh, yeah. and then uh, i think if you look at empathy that kind of addresses a lot of issues around the relationship building area and communication is an extremely powerful thing as we all know uh, and uh, i suggested them to work on uh, storytelling uh, agility based storytelling uh, you know training requirements you know can can be worked on uh, you know and gave some suggestions and tips on around, around that uh, on that front um and uh, the next slide uh, so this is uh, so now we are uh, <clears throat> so we did the team grid and then um, we ran the lencioni's uh, five dysfunctions which is now branded as cohesive behaviors from wiley so there are 20 questions uh, i ran through mentimeter with the team they all uh, vote on their phones or devices so it's all anonymous and uh, <clears throat> these are the results <clears throat> 1 to 10 and as suspected uh, you know the most uh, difficult one was accountability and uh, vulnerability based trust Uh, and this is a pattern i have seen in uh, the engagements i have done these are the most difficult things uh, to crack and then we had an interesting discussion on how to tie uh, this with what they are strong as a team yeah interestingly responsibility is all about accountability and commitment which is number 5 which is great however here it is showing the lowest score and that they pointed that out and it was a <clears throat> great discussion we had the difference between the accountability in lencioni's model and the commitment accountability in gallup is in gallup i am if i tell you something i will do jaya i'm going to finish this by today something i owe you and if i miss it i will feel worse you will feel bad i didn't deliver to you but i will feel miserable it is individual accountability the accountability in lencioni's five cohesive behavior says peer to peer accountability let's say we are working in a team and we have a boss i will hold you accountable to your goal that and i will help you i will be there so if each of us has issues we will not even go to the boss we will hold each other personally at a peer level accountable so we get to the team results so that is the peer to peer accountability uh, so what i did was i uh, you know uh, the the model says trust conflict commitment etc 
I put these adjectives so to make people understand. Trust is not, you know, familiarity-based trust. I know you, you deliver, we work together. Friendship-based trust, no. Vulnerability-based trust, you know, kind of that. And then they understood it's all about working together. So that was an interesting tie up between Lencioni's uh, resolve to the strengths grid. Very interesting, very interesting. And uh, another thing I introduced uh, was the TKI. I love this model. Uh, I'm uh, not an expert in it. There is, I, I'm hoping to take some class, uh, an online class on this. You know, this is all about healthy conflict. You know, if we trust each other that we will not hold each other, we have complete uh, you know, psychological safety. We want to be in this golden top grid of collaboration where everybody's voice is heard and everybody contributes and everybody wins without any fear of who's assertive, who's the boss, the levels in the organization and executing the maximum cooperation. And a lot of times I see people are in the middle, they compromise or they are here, boss tells them what to do and then say, okay, it's your problem. And then you're not vested in that decision for your customers. Yeah, very interesting. So, yeah, and then, uh, you know, uh, this was just some discussion on, you know, what's your takeaway as an individual, what are you gonna take away for your team? What is the one thing you're gonna work on together? Another thing that is not represented in the slides is once we understand who the team is based on their weaknesses, strengths, more, you know, brand statement, and they understand this, then the next question is, okay, now that we have the initial purpose, now that you know each other, what do we do? What do we do? Yeah. Try to get that answer from them. You know, we can do this. We are good at this. We, we can, you know, tweak it. And, you know, trying to leave them with an approach that once we finish the coaching engagement, they have the ability to take it forward by themselves. And another thing uh, we, you know, I try to help them understand is that if you are a boss, you know, we had a separate session with the manager and also a client representative. We say that you don't need to be the best in the team. You know, this is, these are millennials, Gen Z people working today. Be collaborative, show them connectedness, show them more empathy, remove roadblocks in their job, give them ability to learn every day. And then you will have a, you know, high performing interdependent team. So. Sure, interesting. And in kind of the next steps, uh, you know, uh, working on just one weakness, you know, don't boil the ocean. If you get better at listening, that will help you become a more empathetic person, uh, and, you know, kind of that and always tie everything to common purpose and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So this was the uh, experience uh, uh, using, you know, uh, I'm a little biased towards Gallup because I'm certified and I've used it a lot, but trying to use Gallup to create a common knowledge as a team grid and using tools like Lencioni's model and also some of the things we learned working, you know, with you around the peril, looking at the purpose, the external, internal things, trying to combine it, but I, I, I'm thinking that these two, the strengths grid and the Lencioni's are like basic things. Basic, yeah. And then we work on systemic coaching elements using some of those models. Yeah, It's interesting because I think the whole purpose of team coaching is to create collective awareness, right? While we work with coaches to do individual self-awareness, how do you leverage these frameworks to create a collective awareness and collective action? And that's what uh, team coaching really solves for, right? So... Very interesting. Uh, this was an interesting conversation, Salesh. Thank you for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. And um, in case people have some questions, can they reach out to you? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Jaya, for the opportunity. So this is part of my learning journey you know, to continue in this uh, way and uh, you know, help teams become better. Sure. So um, yeah, anyone who would like to have more, ask more questions to Salesh can reach out to him on his LinkedIn. And uh, you can see his full name here. You can search him on LinkedIn, ask any questions. And that's how we create a collective experiences and learning experiences together. Great. Thank you so much, Salesh. We'll Thank you, Jaya. Appreciate it.